Basically, to see what's behind hole number one. Oh no, I think that's the inside of the car. Now, this might not be the best way of going about getting the car back into the garage, but because the concrete has a slope to it, I kind of need to use the W204 to push it back into the garage. I do take some precautions to protect both of the cars, but then stuff like this happens. I mean, seriously, what the hell? That was the exact moment I realized that I messed up. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. Yeah, not the best situation, but anyway, we successfully got the car in here now and we can get started on getting the engine back in there. Now you might be asking why I didn't do this from the beginning to get the engine to fit without having to cut a giant hole over there. But because I wasn't very confident that this will actually work out as well as it did, oh, and it did, If the junkyard engine has something majorly wrong with it or whatever or just it doesn't work I can take the old engine get it back in the car and have a perfectly driving car again now that everything is tried and tested I really want to get the engine to fit without having to have the hole over there so yeah that's the plan for this video I need to get started on that and that means starting with cutting this now this is a pretty important support piece because your control arms kind of connect to it and yeah it keeps everything nice and together but the way the engine is is the oil pump sits directly over this now i've had many sleepless nights over this but there's no way around it we have to cut a piece out but i did get some aluminum tubing that i will be reinforcing it as best as i can as you saw in the previous video, I already got the oil pan done, so that's ready to go. And then along with this change, there's two more over there. So let me show you. Now when you take a look over here, you see that we have the brake lines running behind the engine. I need to figure out if I can move them without breaking them. But if they break, we'll have to make a plan with that. And then we might have to cut a piece into the firewall. I'm not even sure what's behind over here, but I guess I'll have a look and figure it out as I go. So I'm going to start off by trying to bend these three brake lines out of the way so that it goes closer to the firewall because we have to make a bit of space for the oil filter housing. There we go, pretty stoked that I could get those moved out of the way without breaking anything. So that's good. Now we have all the space in the world. Next up, I wanna figure out what's behind this. Hopefully it's not too important, but figure out a way to cut some of it out to make some more space. Okay, this whole saw has seen some better days. But let's see what's behind hole number one. No, I think this, whoopsie, I think that's the inside of the car. Turns out it's, <laughs> uh, it's not very good. This should fix the problem.
Okay, okay. I will admit I got a bit carried away after I made the hole over there because honestly that was a mistake. I really didn't think I wasn't gonna end up inside the car but I managed to cover it up, get it sealed up and it should not be a problem. I also welded this because I'm kind of cut too deep into it but I got that fixed, got a fresh kind of paint on the engine bay. Damn, does she look good. Really happy with how it turned out. And now we can go ahead and start cutting this piece so that we can start getting the engine back in the car. Pretty straightforward getting the engine back in the car. The part that took the longest was definitely the measuring. This morning I just came in here and got it knocked out. And would you look at that? I think it's gonna be perfect. And then I just have the engine resting on the steering rack with a piece of wood to just space it out. And then last night I just got the gearbox mount or the gearbox bracket off of the car. Got some new holes drilled into it and got it back into the car so it's ready to go. So the engine is so the engine is centered like this and then at the front i also measured over here so it's ready to go and then one pretty important thing or step i forgot to do was taking measurements before moving stuff around so at a later stage i'll have to figure out how much i need to take out of the drive shaft and as well as the gear shifter but i'm not going to worry about that now i'm sure i'll figure it out for now let's get some plates made to go against the engine on both sides and then get started on the new engine mounts. Don't want to sleep in cuz I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and all the shit you don't do well I'm gonna make hell of shit that I don't become you. I have no regrets outside of my chest. I'll never forget what it's like to be in debt. Been stabbed in the back bed. I show you what happens. Pass me the mic and I'll show you with action. I feel this pain you already know. Turn that to games, let my money show. I've got these things that I can't let go. Watch me turn this life into something that you can never own. I feel this pain you already know. Turn that to get started on the engine mounts in this video but unfortunately these things take a lot of time especially because i'm just winging it as i go i'm really trying this time to do things right and not have to do all this shit all over again no i'm just kidding i really do enjoy fabricating and building stuff it's weirdly satisfying and also it's my birthday weekend it's my birthday today you know fuck that <laughs> i've always wanted to use that clip so i'm gonna go do that and then I've also been doing some stuff on the Ford, but yeah, that's just a nightmare. 
Honestly, things aren't going as planned with that thing, but at least we made some good progress on this one. Really appreciate you guys watching, and please remember to like the video, and then I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>